project team of the project called Deep Pandemia, that's Johannes and Nicola. And this is Peter. For the Future Lab Ideas Expedition, it's a Future Lab grant. And we wanted to use Deep Space to trigger some thoughts to uh, trigger change in the visitors by providing a simulation which is very immersive and therefore uh, shows the effects of each and everybody's actions to the, to the whole society. The general idea is uh, to make an uh, immersive experience in Deep Space where uh, visitors, now in uh, limited numbers due to Corona, so something like 10 visitors for now, but after, of course, for more, more uh, larger numbers of, uh, of people. So people could come to the deep space and have an immersive experience of uh, the spreading of the coronavirus. And maybe to talk, and we want to start a discussion about this new normality, how to avoid the spreading, what are the uh, normal behavior, how the normal behavior, behaviors are changing, and what could be some better solution to have a, <laughs> still a social life uh, with, uh, in these conditions. And we thought to make some different scenarios, uh, some kind of real life scenarios, where people uh, would act and behave in the deep space, and then uh, we would reveal what happened exactly on the virus spread uh, world. The trigger was actually the, the term social distancing. We always, we always, in coronavirus times, we always started to talk about distancing. So in deep space, we have the possibility to have real scale environments because it's big for uh, multiple visitors at the same time. The idea was to simulate distance. What is distance? What is a certain distance? What happens when more people try to keep a certain distance to each other? to use deep space to underline, to, to realize, to give the, a feeling what is distance and what are three meters, six meters. I think um, a big factor in why we're doing this is that we're amidst a pandemic and we came accustomed to the pandemic and we kind of start to forget that we should take measures, that we should wear masks, that we should um, distance from each other to, to decrease the spreading of the virus. And so we thought if you could like visualize that in a, in a particular engaging way in the deep space, we could emphasize uh, that awareness again. Basically, the experience when you visit Deep Space and in the pandemia is you go in, the moderator explains the project, and then you set different parameters like who's infected, how many are affected, how many ghost visitors are there, and uh, parameters like that. And then the simulation starts, which is uh, more or less nothing than just free moving or we have that certain scenarios like public transport or going to a restaurant. And then you can experience uh, where you can move, how far you can move. Uh, also parameters like coughing, singing, having a, wearing a mask, not wearing a mask will be set before. And then you can see the difference in, in the chances of getting infected. What we are trying to do is keep it all very transparent. What we want is to show the visitor in the deep space that there are certain parameters that facilitate the spreading of a virus. Like if you're too close to each other, if you are coughing, if you are uh, vocally very loud, if uh, you're in a closed environment, these are all parameters that facilitate the spreading. And then there are some countermeasures like wearing masks or keep distance from each other or opening windows that can uh, be provided to 
to work against the spreading of the virus. And we want to show all these different factors in a very transparent way to the visitors so they can uh, start to think about all these things uh, more deeply. We constructed it in a very generic way so that we can... Um, the goal wasn't to, to have a COVID simulator, the goal was to have a pandemic simulator. Irre irrelevant uh, what kind of, of, of pandemic we're talking about. We couldn't actually do it specifically for the coronavirus. For example, when we started and we, when we had the idea, there was very limited information on, 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 on how the, the virus actually spread and what the, the actual values are, which we would have to use. Uh, furthermore, um, a real-time infection would take about like um, 20 minutes if you talk with an infected person uh, directly um, next to you. While in the simulation, we, we don't have that kind of time, so we have to have a, a simulation of that. And what we can see here is uh, the infected entities and the non-infected entities. And I can, for example, move a small non-infected entity uh, directly next to a infected one. And depending on the, the settings we chose, um, the non-infected one is after the time infected as well. Uh, I can move that around, move that towards non-infected one. And um, this is essentially the, the core aspect of the simulation. The use of that is that uh, people should get a feel of um, how large the distance is and how impactful um, the personal choices are. The only factor we can do to condemn is, is behavior. And behavior is not a, a single person's actions, behavior is a collective action. And that's why we wanted to simulate it, to influence and, and raise a little bit the awareness that it's always a collective which needs to behave in a certain way to prevent the spread or slow it down. And, and in the deep space, we have the possibility to visualize that and show them exactly what, what social distancing means also in these different scenarios, like in a, in a shopping mall or in a bus. And what does it mean to, to, to keep two meters distance mm -hmm. like in the bus, that's, that's super also. difficult. Yeah. This is more practical because um, everyone knows how to act like that in, 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 a, in a situation like that. You walk into the bus um, and you wait and nothing's happening currently. But um, if I en enable the, the view again, then we can see there are several things uh, that popped up right away. Uh, for example, those, those are the, the gray areas where uh, which are so-called hotspots. Um, for example, you, you, you can go to a bus and you press the, the, the stop button you want to get out. And um, But this button had, has been pressed before by several people. And if now an infected person um, presses this button, um, small parts of the virus uh, stay behind. And a non-infected person could get infected just by pressing this button again and moving the hand to the mouth. And we simulate that by um, by by doing a hotspot. Uh, and now, if an infected person, as you can see here, uh, now moves into the uh, into the hotspot area, um, the hotspot area will be infected after that time. I guess well, one thing we have to say is that we are kind of aware that we are not making a absolutely one hundred percent mathematically uh, true simulation. I mean, it's. We have to deal. We are, we are trying to to take mm -hmm. uh, all the parameters from the from the science uh, st from scientific studies, of course. But the, the science itself is still uh, searching. Yeah. What what is a real time of of uh, yeah, this drop plate in the hair? How long does it and so on? So, but we are trying to take as honest as possible uh, and true to to science. But of course, it's uh, some estimation, and sometimes uh, we, we can tweak. But this, this, uh, this process are made visible uh, in deep space. Uh, the parameters to maybe to augment it or to uh, make a scenario more more visible. Uh, yeah, this is this is this is our approach. Like we know that that a lot of these parameters or 
factors are like in current research and they aren't like set in stone. Every day there is new research happening and what's what's right for one day could be different for the for the next. So this is why we want to keep those uh, factors um, alive. Like we, we can change them over time. We can change them directly in each scenario. So um, we take like the SARS-CoV-2 as some kind of a basis for the simulation. But uh, then again, we'll, we are aware that this is a current research and we are trying to to keep up with the research and keep it open. We researched some studies, of course, and we um, used their, the methodology in, in, in the sense that, okay, uh, this virus has is very, very easily transmissible through the air. This virus sticks very well to surfaces, and this virus has very um, easy, um, for example, um, uh, through physical contact, it is very easy to, easily transmissible or, or not. And based on, on those uh, expressions they used, uh, we constructed a, a, a simulation, uh, a model that works for us. It's built in Unity, uh, it's a, a game engine, and it's developed in C Sharp. Um, further, there's a development kit for the Deep Space, which gives us options of using, for example, the laser tracking and and, and is handling it, and also how the um, the actual visuals are presented on the screen. And deep space is not just um, a visualization with uh, those two layers and IPCA. It's a uh, it's track too. So it's uh, it, it allow interactivity yeah. uh, in, as a so, you know, position the space is tracked with a system called FAUS, which is developed from uh, our Electronica Future Lab. And this allows us to know exactly the position uh, in the space of, uh, of the visitors. And of course, then to make uh, live visualization or uh, interactive visualization uh, for different topics and in our case for information visualization. Yeah, the Baros speciality is that we use LiDAR technology to track multiple persons at the same time and uh, it's uh, deviceless. So. It's just, it's working by evaluating laser data, but nobody has to wear a tracker or something. It's just, you step in and you're tracked. It's a very unconscious thing, but a very helpful thing to do simulations with the people in the space. Yeah, and what we really want is to uh, spark a discussion about pandemics, about uh, what society have to, has to do in such situations, how we have to behave with each other. And we think the deep space is like the perfect opportunity, the, uh, it's the perfect petri dish to start such a discussion because you're in there and uh, you're living through that simulation and yeah that's that's why we are trying to to make it happen.